I give my life not for honour but for you. It's VGC, the video game podcast, with me, Jordan Medler, Pete Donaldson, and Andy Robinson. This week, Andy's back from Japan, and Indiana Jones is going to the PlayStation. But first, how's it going, folks? PTD, you're the one without liquid in your mouth, so tell me, how are you? Oh, <laughs> yes, Andy, uh, fresh from his Japan trip, is uh, terrifically jet-lagged, so I imagine he's hoovering up um, pure... Um, so you know when you sort of get like um, three spoonfuls of coffee and put it in the bottom of a of a mug and just make like a rich syrup, lovely as <laughs> he syrup, Cagrazy. and then just spoon that into your mouth just to just to get through the day. I'm, I'm at the stage of the morning where it stops working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's just eating a, a hot full bag of fruit. It just, bastels, it just like tastes like legend. Yeah, hot, hot gravy. <laughs> yeah, Aside from the jet lag, how are you, Andy? Um, I'm all right. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's Friday, isn't it? Is it Friday? Friday? <laughs> you got that Friday it's... feeling? I'm going. I'm going to Brew Dog tonight for wings. Oh, yeah, the one in uh, the one on the South uh, Bank with the big slide. No, I know the one no. near me. There's one near me. <laughs> There's um, one near. I won't everyone. disclose the location. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 booked booked a table. We're going to eat some wings. It's a, a rare oh. weekend <clears throat> for me in the country. I need so I'm to... catching up. I'm going to pitch this to you two right now. There is a place in london um called passinuck avenue i believe there's two of them there's You've one in Fitzrovia. no there's, there's one in Fitzrovia and there's one in uh near waterloo it's a philadelphia themed bar <laughs> they're all they always show always sunny they show like the philadelphia eagles games and they have some of the best wings and uh philly cheesesteaks you're ever going to have in your time so i the really with tom hanks about aids all the time, they actually all give the me on the way out. All yeah, of the yeah. waiters are cosplaying as him. <laughs> so you have to, you have to weigh like four dog, stone yeah. to work there. Oh dear! I, you won't, you'll be four stone heavier when you come out of it. I dragged Laura there last time we were down, and it was like the start of an evening of th- of like things to do. And I ate so much that so I was like, "This is me. I can't, I can't actually do anything else." Like I am trying to you know when you eat so much that you can feel all of your energy go into digestion and you just start mm. like your head starts nodding and it's completely over passing our avenue um i think next time we're in london sack off doing the podcast we just go and eat yeah. we ask just if we, we can record there we just eat into the mic i think it's a, <laughs> a grand old time um i took one dan Riker to the brew dog on shaftesbury avenue and um he was amazed by just how loud and like uh disgusting the center of london is in terms of like uh motorbikes and big loud cars flying past and it just stinking mm. of smog it was a real cultural exchange where, um, were, where were they where were they from in the in the first instance what, what uh, Riker lives like? in i believe he lives in the east coast of the u.s he's originally from kansas right. city but he's from okay. i think he lives in like the woods and in, in the east coast which <laughs> sounds great to be honest like Close enough to New York where you can do New Yorky things, but just have a compound out in the from woods. From a bloody village or something. Was he like yeah. looking up at the skyscrapers asking what those big metal <laughs> trees were? <laughs> what are those metal birds? Were, it was when I was flying down for that Silent Hill thing. He was just sending me pictures being like, does the Queen live here? Like outside Buckingham Palace, like just going. He walked around for like four hours and just saw everything, which I suppose is... <laughs> One of the good things about London. Yeah. One of the great things about London is uh, every street is a historical landmark. It's covered yeah, the, the, there was one shades. that I discovered on TikTok yesterday. Uh, there's a street quite near Angel Station where, um, uh, sort of heading towards sort of Pentonville, kind of um, King's Crossway, uh, where a lot of like bricks had been like graffitied. People had sort of scoured little numbers in these bricks, uh, mm-hmm. and apparently it was because um, it was a massive crime spot and bored policemen. Uh, in the 1800s, would would etch <laughs> their uh, their police numbers into it, and I thought I'll go and visit that. And I thought, why? It's just some bored <laughs> men who've just scoured numbers into some bricks. Why? I have such <laughs> little free time these days. Anyway, why would I choose to do that? And then um, after I'd sort of sh- stopped shouting at myself, I just made a cup of tea. <laughs> Fair. I love a bit of graffiti. I like that the uh, there's a West Ham crest like scratched into the chair that the bloody mm. king gets coronated on like and it was just westminster school kids <laughs> the that queen did that, that. that. yeah <laughs> she, <laughs> she was a massive iron yeah, um, look it up she, allegedly she, she was. My, my favorite one uh, in london is nat has herpes which is everywhere um <laughs> it, i don't know who nat is um i don't know what she's been up to but she's got herpes and it's she's everywhere a, she's absolutely full of it and um, round my way <laughs> 
people have like a young presumably a young person because this wasn't kicking a ball when i was young has been spray painting the heartogram which is the the band him and the skateboarder slash deviant oh. bam margera's logo he's wow. been spray painting that with a pair of tits like on top <laughs> of it and i was well i kept seeing this everywhere and it was like you know in the simpsons and every shot you see like an el barto like this heartogram yeah. tit man is everywhere but the problem was i didn't realize i've been wearing a hem shirt that I got in like 20, 2009 with a big heartogram on it. So I'm going to walk into the local is. shop it's, and people are going to be like, man. that's 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 heartogram tip boy right there. <laughs> he's, been, he's, he's been out there with spray paint on um, like electrical junction boxes. So it's not me. Why is, so why is the heart? So the heart man draws the heart and it will be a man. It draws the heart and then <laughs> cannot resist doing the nipples on the top of the heart yeah. on the two mounds. Outrageous. I mean, the heartogram is an iconic logo. The only thing that can make it mm. better, pair of tits. So I really do understand <laughs> it. I, I don't understand how it's come back into vogue, though. Like, anyone who knows who Bam Margera is has a little bit of hair loss at this point. So it can't be someone that's, uh, that's like, in school. So, no, it's, it's true. And I, and, I think, and I think that... But I would say that any um, rock logo... I can't think of a single rock logo from Megadeth to the Rolling Stones' lips that couldn't... Um, rock a pair of boobies just yeah. some pendulous boobies hanging off the lips maybe <laughs> from Iron Maiden with a big pair of tits That's yes please Bruce Dickinson on his weird plane I would Hello, not get on a fantasy. plane piloted by Bruce Dickinson um, anyway Pete inspired by you this week mm. I have to drink Dark Thunder Zero Blast yes which come sounds on. like a film about the Iraq war but um, did you go to was... Aldi just for uh, the Dark Thunder Zero Sugar because it is it's it's very tasteless my my partner would claim that we went to Aldi for shopping but I had eyes for mm. only one thing <laughs> they okay. seem to sell them in they don't sell them in four packs they're just loose yeah <laughs> they are just loose <laughs> they're just loose having none of it hmm it's actually it's not as like devious as i expected i expected it thought it was gonna be i expected it to have a real kind of disgusting taste to it but it just tastes Mm. like a facsimile of the white monster um right what i what i'm pretty sure will have a disgusting taste unfortunately is um brain liquor mega sour strawberry fizzy candy I drink i really do with one of those right now as well yeah well, i don't not... think this is an energy drink though i think this is just pure sugar um but it's suitable oh, for no vegans in it. you could drop a pro plus in there i'm sure yeah drop an a truck of speed it. oh my god it, <laughs> it tastes like um... <laughs> it's, it tastes like a brain liquor uh, why are you surprised john why it, it tastes like a melted ice pole that someone is very <laughs> lightly put in a soda stream and um, <laughs> it's so profoundly strawberry ish um <laughs> <laughs> but I would also like to bring to the fore that when I posted this on Twitter, a lot mm. of British people were saying, is that Rayman? What's that? Is a brain liquor not it's a, brain a, liquor. Yeah. a UK-wide phenomena? Like, I remember when I used to go to all tomorrow's parties uh, at Butlins, there was always um, one of the major sweet uh, genres was the brain liquor. Because brain liquor mm. is just an acrid, colourful uh, monstrosity in a, in a little kind of um, a deodorant bottle, basically. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's got like a little ball in the top. And instead of like consuming the candy or drinking the candy, you basically lick it to make it last longer. And, and, the, and the rotating ball goes round. It's a foul way of drinking anything. Uh, couldn't patch it these anything. days. You just couldn't. Um, no. It's, it's in the era of those like ring pops. And uh, sweets had to have some kind of gimmick to them. So instead of mm. just drinking this red syrup, you have to like lick it out of the. You lick have to lick it out of the fucking deodorant can. Um, Makes your tongue feel furry just doing it. I'm uh, gonna knock on with a uh, knock or focus um, oh. uh, caffeine drink. Oh, uh, nice. uh, ram ramenade flavor. So there we go. I see there those in the I'll airport nice all the time. So let's. I- I'm interested. Thin. Thin. Oh, that's disappointing. Thin, Straight off the thin, bat. Thin grapey. Aloe vera, thin, green Aloe tea vera. extract, thin, thin, mm. rubbish. That's disappointing. Um, oh, Andy, Pete was, um, Andy. <laughs> Pete was recently on the wonderful Football Ramble broadcast and he was drinking energy drinks and he got into trouble for it, but never on this podcast. This is an <laughs> energy drink. This is a safe space. <laughs> yeah, inclusive environment. How many mm. energy drinks will be at uh, Football Ramble Time Tunnel? Oh, good point, actually. Maybe I could sort of... My usual kind of thing is... Uh, drinking two um, cans of lager, 
realizing that's too many cans of lager <laughs> about five minutes into the show, uh, forgetting everything I was supposed to be doing, and then uh, yeah, just just I, I can I can sort of see the other ramblers boring uh, a hole at the back of my head um, when I'm in the uh, when I'm in the dressing room at halftime going. <laughs> You drank too much, Peter. You need to, you need to slow down. <laughs> Football Ramble, no, Time Tunnel, Friday, September 20th at the London yeah. Palladium. That would be good fun. As someone who has been to two Football Ramble live shows, um, oh. it's, a, it's a night you won't forget because um, you'll be questioned about it under caution. Let's get into some news. Story number one, in a rare move, Andy's been to Japan. How was it, love? Um, it was all right. When there wasn't, when there wasn't an earthquake or a typhoon or yeah, some other natural things, disaster. Talking about how much happening. you love natural disasters. That was um, your favourite bit of Sim City two thousand. You said, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like I was supposed to go to the um, uh, the, the beach down in the south because um, I've never, I've, you know, never mm. done a, a Japanese beach before. So I researched it for ages. I remember me and you were talking about. I think it's where you went. Um, oh uh, right, really? Shirahama. Yeah, okay. Yes, sure. How right. beach. Yeah. So we, we had that all booked up, very very excited, and then an earthquake happened the day before, um, and they put out that ah. that um, warning for that. So for those who don't know, Japan is due, like a lot of places around the Pacific, a uh, mega quake that happens every mega hundred quake. to hundred and fifty years. And this particular earthquake that happened uh, while I was there, I mean, it's not unusual for uh, it's probably the most earthquake prone place in the world, but because of where it happened on this tectonic plate. They they put uh, you know a, an trench, alert out yes uh, like a high warning that this uh, this hundred year you know kind of every hundred years quake um, you know was more at risk than usual so that happened the day before uh, we were due to go down south to this beach and it's like literally like it's the, <laughs> it's uh, I mean I looked into it afterwards it was like if this quake happens the tsunami's there in two minutes. <laughs> you know, right, right. <laughs> right. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's rather exposed. I mean, I was, I was out, I was out at dinner with some friends, uh, some Japan friends, and they were like, yeah, I wouldn't go. <laughs> now, you should, yeah. come and on, I, kids. How and fast I you run? It's, it's, it's eleven. <laughs> uh, this is this is a story that that I can expand on later. It's eleven o'clock at night in the director of Res's kitchen, um, and <laughs> the the creator of Space Channel Five is on the phone to my hotel trying to get my money back basically and she was just laughing at the end because they uh they were like going no it's all right we're 30 meters uh, from the beach <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it's the sort of trick you can pull if there wasn't a, a quite notable tsunami kind of taking place you know not 10 years ago so it's, it's but it's, yeah. the thing is it's like and obviously this became very apparent to me is that for us europeans who do we do not have earthquakes so mm. to people who live in Japan, it's just just normal. It's just normal. Yeah. I mean, I was there going, oh, admin, what should I do? It? What should I do? And they're like, oh no, hope that it doesn't happen. <laughs> I guess I guess when you go with your family as well, if it's just if you just buy, oh, hundred percent, you can be a yeah. bit more risky. You can be a bit more kind 100%. of less risk averse. But when it's your family, like oh, we 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 would have gone if we, if we did, exactly <laughs> if we. I don't want to have to this be picking up fault. kids while I'm running from the waves. <laughs> um, <laughs> If, uh, hey, if, 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 if you if don't have me. to outrun the wave, you just outrun your kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if I didn't have them with me, I absolutely would have gone. Um, but it's, it's yeah. one of those, isn't it? It's like, are you really going to be relaxed while you're laying on the beach? <laughs> you look up a cage. Was that a, did a car drive past or was that a... <laughs> it's like a tra- it's like a trailer for a video game, isn't it? It's like Dead Island or something. Oh god! And he looks down, his, <laughs> looks down at his phone to scream at me on Slack, and he looks back up, and there's a two hundred foot wave above him, and he's just like, "Well, I went out doing what I'd I love." I'd still be, I'd still be messaging <laughs> you whilst I ride that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So when you go, Glad you've you been said. so many times, like. Each time you go, is it doing things you've done before again, or is it always you try? Not to get really. I mean, it dep- depends. Depends how depends how close the visits are, right? Uh, I mean, now that I can, it, it's mainly. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'd be lying. Obviously, I, I, I it's uh, uh, my my passion is Japan. Visiting Japan is a passion of mine, as is for you know a few of us. Um, but now, you know, kind of when I take the kids, it's it's more you know what they want to do and stuff, right? Mm. Um, I mean, I'm fortunate in in our profession that I get to visit, you know, semi regularly. So I get the chance to do what I want to do. So this is more about mm. like what the kids want to do, theme parks and things like that. And it's a wonderful place to take your kids. 
Um, I don't think that's um, kind of widely known enough that it is a wonderful country to take your children. There's so much to do there. It's the safest place on earth. Um, mm. I mean, where we were at a festival, you know, at some, you know, festivals sat on a picnic blanket, swigging cans of premium beer and just sending <laughs> them, you know, sending them up to get some food. I'll just go over there. Yeah. You know, they go behind hundreds of thousands of people. You can't see where they are, but you'd never do that in anywhere else other than Japan, mm. basically. You went back to Universal. What's the latest one? In is the Donkey Kong stuff? No, there? they delayed it, it annoyingly. Yeah, because yeah, we were hoping to do that. So they've got the merchandise mm. and stuff out. Um, First to make it quick, now the Donkey Kong it. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the Nintendo Museum was supposed to be open as well. They delayed that. Uh... Um, uh, it was it was a weird one, actually, because um, it's the first time that, I mean, I'm, again, I'm fortunate enough to have been a few times to uh, Nintendo World. So this time it was like, oh, I'm just going to wing it, because usually you, you pay extortionate amounts to get like a guaranteed entry ticket, right? Yeah. It's like a separate, they have to... They, they only let they, so many people in, basically, to stop it overcrowding, and it is overcrowded. Um, so what you can do is you can pay money to get a guaranteed entry ticket, or you can just turn up and use the app, and they give you a time, like, for free. So it's the first time we did that, you know, and um, we were, like, late getting in, and we got 8.30 p.m. I think the park closed mm. at 10. So we were we were the last people out of this park. I was still riding the Mario Kart ride at ten past ten when the park was shut. <laughs> like they wouldn't let us go to the toilet afterwards. Jesus. The the um, I want to do the Universal Experience anywhere but Hollywood. I'm on about this every time, but the Hollywood one is like the size of a postage stamp, and it's. Oh, so is it really? Oh no, no, involved. that's right. That's true. I've been there. No, what am I talking yeah. about? Yeah, I've been there a few times. Uh, the Hollywood one. Yeah, uh, it, I don't. It robs the magic of it to me. I don't Not know just because there was Japan forty thousand people there. Hugely bigger. I quite like the vibe of the um the Hollywood one because it's literally on the um studio lot, right? Yeah, that's that's cool. I like that. Yeah, I I don't know. I like like you literally you go you go on the tour and you go past like the rocks parking space and stuff, and that's where <laughs> that's where they're literally making the Mario movie in here. Uh, you know, Starting next to rock. Nintendo World. Um, yeah, Nintendo World. Talking about Nintendo World, yeah, it's it's, it's proper shit. The uh, the Hollywood one. Um, if yeah. you're if you're an American listener and you you yet to go, I would wait for the uh, the Florida one, which I believe is opening next year, which is going to be full size. Because there's just and there's no space in Hollywood, so they're, they're extremely limited to what they can do because they've basically built it yeah, in a neighborhood. Absolutely. Or Florida. what you could do is you could fly to Japan and have the do experience that. of Universal Studios with no Americans in it. Or at least fewer, <laughs> fewer Americans. I was about to say, the, the month of October, when this bloody museum opens, it's going to be hell on earth. I'm going to skip forward to that story here, since we're chatting about it. Um, they did a little direct in which uh, Miyamoto walked through the museum. It is opening on October 2nd. Andy, you were looking into getting tickets. What is the status of that? It's, it's a bit weird. You've got a... Um... Well, it seems like it's, I mean, I'll let you know in a week, but it seems like it's, it's very well handled because what they've done is they, you apply for tickets. Uh, you can mm. apply for free time slots on date, specific dates. And then they do a, a draw, like a lottery right. on the first of the month. And then you, That's cool. but they, as people know, the Japanese are not great at, uh, you know, organizing ticketing for, <laughs> um, you know, popular attractions. Um, Go down the Seven Eleven to I'm type still... all your information into some weird. <laughs> yeah, machine. yeah. You oh, literally good. have to get oh, a Japanese good. man to do it for you um, in someone's kitchen. <laughs> like you have to phone up from a Japanese number and blah. blah, blah. It's ridiculous. Mm. Um, so um, this is actually fairly decent in that compared. Like the Kirby, there's a Kirby Cafe in Tokyo. I'm still yet to get tickets for it. I'm not exaggerating when I say <laughs> if you you go to Japan, you try to to go to this thing. They go on sale at like 10 a.m. on a specific Thursday in the month. Like the whole month's tickets go on sale. By the time you press their five, they've all sold out. Like that's right. how much protection they have from recent. It's ridiculous. But the Nintendo Museum, they actually seem to be doing it properly. So you can only you apply for like free slots and it tells you how busy each one is, like how in demand the requests are. So that's super helpful straight away. And then they do a lottery. And it's like, it's all tailored to you. It's your Nintendo account. It's your name matched to your passport, your phone number. You cannot resell it for hell by the looks of it. 
They mm. literally give you an ID with your me on it. Um, so it does. <laughs> I mean, I, again, I'm talking <laughs> early here the because the, the, the raffle for my particular one is the first. So what's that week? Next weekend. So I'll let you know. Book that deal. You know, I could so the I next can... podcast. I'll be saying it's a right load of shit, but. Yeah, I was about to say, if that goes poorly, it'll go poorly for all of it's us. It's quite interesting. Um, you can't, Americans are, are about to lose their mind because you, they advise you can't get to the museum uh, by any mode of transport other than public transport. There's like no parking. Oh, no. You can't even get a taxi oh, there. Maybe, surely they'll do an, a Nintendo themed bus. Like the, the big well, oh, yes, bus. I imagine that's the exactly Potter what thing. they've done. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's the most kind of like coveted kind of thing in there? What's the most important? So um, it's relic? weird. It's kind of split up into there's a section where they kind of talk about the pre Nintendo, the pre video game Nintendo stuff when they were making like Hanafuda cards and like yeah. random little items, and then it's largely split up by generation. Andy, is that the case? Well, yeah. they, I mean, it's, it's worth noting they haven't shown all of it. Yeah, um, they've shown some floor of like you know a museum of every item they've released, right? Split into platforms. Which, uh, I mean, I was watching the direct at the time thinking, if this is it, it's pretty underwhelming, right? Yeah. I might as well mm. like charge people to come around to my office here and I'll show them some stuff. <laughs> yeah, here's some games. Um, but then they've got they've got all kinds of attractions in there, which is is, is interesting. Um, like you, you, as part of your ID, you get you get like ten coins and you can use them to like you go visit these attractions. And I, I imagine uh, Miyamoto has been quite hands on with this because this is the sort of stuff he's up to these days. Is that they've designed these theme park like attractions based on Nintendo's old toys. Like mm. there's uh, the the I can't remember what he's called. Like the, is it the Super Hand, the Grabber? Like it's like a pair of like oh, tongs. Yeah, yeah. There's like a game based on that. Um, there's like a game where a light gun game with a super scope, like it's a whole game where you're like blasting, uh, you know, kind of Mario characters with his super scope mm. uh, for a high score. There's the, uh, I can't remember what the other ultra something, the baseball one where it shoots baseballs at you. There's like a, a, a in a room, a cage of like a mocked up old school, like a living room. And depending on what you whack the baseballs to it or like kind of do different stuff, like the scenery will play little jingles or react or animate and things like that. So it looks like there's some fun attractions in there. There's like a, they talks about like a restaurant and a shop and, um, you know, some sort of uh, craft area where you can make your own Hanafuda cards. But, uh, you know, I, I've, I saw a lot of, you know, I think a lot of the, the super fans uh, will be hoping that there's a bit more to it than that. Like, I think we were kind of hoping to see some prototypes and, uh, you know, and a look mm. behind the scenes at, you know, uh, at how, you know, the company's kind of most famous creations came to be. Um, so hopefully that's the, the kind of the stuff that they haven't showed us, which you'd imagine I see. perhaps if they were trying to sell it, that would be the least sexy. I want to, I want to see a big jar full of formaldehyde <laughs> encased within the duck hunt dogs neutered testicles. Just, mm. you know, I, I, want, I want to see the actual, this is the stuffed duck hunt dog. The stuffed duck hunt this dog. This is the actual yeah. dog. <laughs> I mean, it's, so apparently this coin thing, you can't buy yeah, extra can't, coins. Yeah. And so you can't you, use you every can't attraction. Do everything each visit. So, I mean, that's a. Uh, I mean, I think this is, this is what mu- museums uh, have become. Like modern museums are like mini theme park attractions, right? Yeah, that's what they are. But like, it's still like we demand more these days. That's that's what a, probably a modern audience expect from a museum. But for me, I just mm. wanted to see some cool stuff, which they didn't yeah, really I th- show. I think. I mean, even even I, like you look at some of the boxes, right? Like uh, while I'm getting into it, they're a museum of here's all the uh, <laughs> Nintendo games. They're battered. It was like a, <laughs> it's like it's like they're in the office. Like, has anyone got a copy of Duck Hunt? Any, t- Terry, so you got one? I, I've got I've got one here. Is that enough? Yeah, I'll do. Down the Stick back on. of his sofa. I still got yeah. to find Excite Bite and Mac Rider yet. Anyone got that? <laughs> I would have thought that Nintendo would be like Lego, where if you go to uh, the Lego headquarters and museum and build in Denmark, they have a pristine copy of everything they've ever released. Like, you'd surely yeah. think that Nintendo would do something like that. I'm sure you just go any you know, go to your, any of your Akihabara um, video game shop and you probably get a ve- better versions of what. That's probably probably sent there. someone yeah. down, yeah, do the rounds, yeah. send him down, 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 down. Tour me, tour me a motor around those places and be like, I'll take a picture in your shop if you give me one out of written in the yeah. door. Sure, fine, do yeah, it, fine. take it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be. 
I, I think that would be pretty cool. It will be insufferable seeing people like vlog their way through it and stuff like that. But I hope there's a big Japanese man with a samurai sword that cuts off people's arms. When it they does. Try it to does seem it like there. it's fairly. I mean, again, I won't get a sense until a couple of weeks, but it does seem like it's fairly controlled. Mm, because right. when I when I put my tickets in, because I did the tickets and I cancelled them and did them again, so it was uh, at least like a day or two after the opening, they, they started opening kind of ticket requests, and most of the slots, the vast majority, was like low, uh, like low requests, low number of like uh, of requests. Um, mm. And again, the, the process does suggest that. They, you know, that it's it's not designed for a mass influx of people. That they're creating a bespoke business, like a ID card for you with your me on it and and coins. And there's like, you know, only like even like some of the games, there's only a certain number of slots there. But I guess we'll see. We shall see. Uh, we'll do open the night live stuff in the second half of the show. This is a funny story. Black myth Wukong influencers ask to leave politics, COVID, and quote feminist propaganda out of coverage uh, some influencers <laughs> and streamers were given uh, a document asking them to uh, not include the following insulting other influencers or players using offensive language or humor using quote trigger words like quarantine isolation or covid19 discussing china's games industry policies opinions <laughs> news etc and to leave out feminist propaganda this was apparently sent to people by hero games which was a marketing team for black myth wukong developer game science this was a weird situation because this blew up and it blew up under the proviso of this is what reviewers were sent every reviewer was sent this and then i went on twitter and said no the reviewers yeah. were sent a bit of paper that says don't show this boss fight don't show this boss fight didn't have nothing to do with covid or feminism and then it turned out that uh, some streamers and influencers were in fact sent this but only in certain regions like they were sent it in france and china and yeah. um, this is such a weird situation and in all the biggest grifter re regions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i bet if this was just sent to influencers in china would have never heard about it but yeah. as soon as one french journalist was like bonjour Le on, with on with the gilet fuck yeah. you <laughs> excuse my language i don't mean to always have a beef with france on this podcast but i mean um the yeah it's a very very strange situation it's doubly strange because there has already formed a protective bubble of some of the worst people in the world around this game um and this is just adding to it where people are on steam and reddit being like see finally a game with no wokeism and no feminist propaganda and it's the biggest <laughs> game in the world um it's the it's the biggest game in the world when china is awake look at the steam numbers when china's not awake i thank you um <laughs> right okay but yeah i um, mean I, I do like it i do like it when china is seen to be trying to throw their weight around in a world that they're just really they don't really have that much of a foothold in i know like 10 cent have stakes in like riot and unreal engine and oh, everyone blizzard and stuff and everyone pretty much and and obviously cod revels in american imperialism but i do um i do like um that when china goes uh actually can we stop talking about this place or or they fund a company that tells uh, people to do that and and, and people go mm, no you don't really have a handle in this place like the premier league in many ways this is proof that these grifters on Twitter that are anti wokeism and are saying that games journalists are in the pocket of big companies, one, don't care, two, have no idea what they're talking about, and three, have absolutely no courage in their convictions. Because when this came out, all of them just went, nah, it doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe people shouldn't talk about COVID 19. It's fine. <laughs> Game companies can say what they want. Um, Personally, I think the rules were pretty decent, and I don't think that uh, anyone should complain too much about them. But, oh, uh, if, well, if you got that in it, but do uh, uh, ultimate wireless controller for the people listening on the uh, audio you're holding up to the camera. Uh, I think that anyone complaining about Black Myth Wukong <laughs> should be deeply ashamed of themselves. Um, Why have you got should... so much hair growing out your face at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> you've done a little, I am a little the Wukong, monkey man. man. Um, <laughs> this was a stupid situation. I have Black Myth Wukong impressions on the site. It's a pretty good game. It's a big boss rush and it looks amazing, but it's a yeah. bit kind of, yeah. Apparently right. it runs terribly on PS5 as well. But that doesn't matter to gamers. All that matters is that they can see this as a win in the ultimate point scoring contest that is this industry for some reason. Um, <laughs> people need to seriously, 
seriously grow up. Um, Pete, you were in commercial radio for a long time. Did you ever run into weird things like this where you were very specifically told, like, don't mention this news story because they're coming in next week for an interview? Like, how was that? Yeah, I think I think that you'd always get... If, um, <clears throat> if somebody was experiencing some kind of spicy kind of um, personal uh, life situation... A three-in-a-bed um, romp? Yeah, I remember I did Chris Martin right after he split up with Paltrow and mm. they were having a conscious and coupling and that was made very clear that um he he wasn't to uh, we weren't to talk about that. Um but I'd actually split with my girlfriend that week as well. So so <laughs> we did actually You're like it's all right mate, it happens that. to the best of us. But I th- I think he but I think he thought I was cuz like he said what have you do at the weekend and I had nothing that I did over the weekend apart from split with my girlfriend for four years. Yeah, yes. Can't remember. Anyway, for a long time. <laughs> so, I love it. so literally, first thing he says when he comes in, what have you been up to? Uh, oh, I broke up my Split girlfriend. Up my girlfriend. All your producers behind the window going, rrr, rrr. <laughs> it was it was like that. He gave me a little badge. <laughs> he went, Oh, sorry to hear that, mate. Here's a here's a little badge. <laughs> we talked a bit about his, Everything's okay. his, his love life. So yeah. Pete was like, you know, it's weird. My girlfriend also sold a candle that smelled like a vagina. What are the odds, Chris Martin? <laughs> what are the odds? Oh, were we seeing the same person? Oh. <laughs> Pete Donaldson steps out with Gwyneth Paltrow on the Soho <laughs> streets. Do you miss living in central London, Pete? Because every time I'm in London, I think about you trolling up these alleys. Tro- yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I they've now I, I used to have a very leaky shower in Old Compton Street where I lived mm. and it used to deposit water into the cavity wall and it would slowly <laughs> start to fill the basement um of the building or the, the you know the the, the 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 ground floor of the building mm. and the ground floor of the building was um Il Camisa uh, a legendary 1940s I think um Italian deli um mm. And it just left Soho now. And I can't help but think that I spoiled so much of their <clears throat> dry pasta over the years that um, <laughs> they, they, they just suddenly just could not afford to run a, a, a mid Soho deli, uh, sadly. So, yeah, I do miss ruining businesses. I miss me bubble tea. Uh, and I miss, uh, you know, we talked I miss, about I miss this bubble tea absolutely <laughs> boofing. It's the most disgusting, like, modern. And look, I drank you a lot of You just drank a beer in liquor for crying out loud. <laughs> I'll not have this. It's got no bits in it. It's got no like balls of plastic. You don't know until you get the bottom of it. But yeah, probably asbestos in the bottom of that. You don't know yet. (laughs) I just think that drinks don't need a gimmick. They don't need a physical item in them to like spice up your life. Like the the flavor profile of some of these. This is coming back to haunt you. Seems fine. But see if tomorrow (laughs) Monster were like we're doing a new Monster that has like tapioca balls in it. That would mm. honestly, I'd be putting out like a YouTube apology statement, like retracting all my um, support for the brand over the years. It's just but you, you know, so what? Just a, the same energy drink with a fancy can is fine. Mm. That's not a gimmick. But different yeah. flavors. Different flavors <laughs> ain't no gimmick, brother. Tapioca is a gimmick. No. Monster Energy, we've uh, put a, a double A battery in everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to have a, a drink that has like paintball looking things in the top of it. I'm just right. so convinced. I'm going to drink one of them. It's going to go straight. It's going to press the button at the back of my head that makes it explode. <laughs> and that is it. I've just, it's, <laughs> no one likes that stuff. It's a complete fallacy. It's a poser yeah. thing. It's for, it's for I like that, cream cheese. Cream cheese. The cream, cream cheese. One, cheese. But... Cream cheese in a bubble tea. That's the sort of that's the sort of cape they got up to near me. Whoa. When we were at this the Star Wars theme park the other month, they were like, "There's a you get there's this viral drink where it's like a an iced coffee with some foam on it, and then they put cocoa pops on the top of it, and it's like, oh, this is like a Bespin chocolate milk, and it was like twenty dollars. I was like, this whole thing's a farce. <laughs> Working for this company must be the easiest thing in the entire yeah. world. That it's probably cost 15 pence to produce and they charge $20. <laughs> disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, after the break, we were chatting opening night live, listener questions, and the 40 million previews I've recently done. We'll see you in a minute. And we are back. If you enjoy this podcast, you can get extra podcasts on patreon.com slash video games chronicle and a whole lot more you can get a newsletter in which uh, chris scullion calls me a horrible name that was not uh, approved <laughs> but we proceed was by me accurate oh well i suppose <laughs> i've been outvoted um there's a lot of coverage going on right now on monday the embargo is up for star wars outlaws a game that i'm currently playing we will have our review we'll have the reviewers round table in which i will 
uh, heard some cats of the video game industry and chat about the game and we'll have some exclusive content on patreon.com slash video games chronicle there's also another huge embargo on monday i can't tell you wow. speaking of coverage silent hill 2 preview kingdom come deliverance preview indiana jones preview gamescom previews some absolute nonsense that chris gillians went off to play all of that on the site right now speaking of gamescom opening night live kicked off the festivities myself andy and the naked man tom ivan stayed up to watch it overall thoughts andy on the show um, I thought it was better than it usually is. I mean, usually um, Gamescom opening night live is the dredges of uh, mm, of right. Jeff's Jeff Keeley's free shows. Um, partly, it feels like because it's the only one that seems to have obligations that he doesn't probably control. You know, like he's mm. part of How Gamescom. How would you rank them? How would you rank the three? Oh, it'd be dead last. It'd be, yeah. be, be uh, Game Awards is the top one, then Summer Game Fest, then uh, then dead last. Uh, gamescom usually it's like it's badly curated it's got tons of red bull adverts on it it's all like the <laughs> stuff that they're he's obligated to do because of the, like they're exhibiting at gamescom it feels like um you know it's too many like euro fantasy live service yeah. games mm. you know and then anything that 10 cents got left um but this <laughs> this one but this one was good i thought there's some really good stuff in there it's genuine genuinely big announcements like borderlands 4 you don't really get bigger than that i mean it's unfortunate timing coming straight after their <laughs> absolute you know bomb of a movie um but you know there was some interesting like an original games in there as well um i really like the look of the amazon game uh was it king of meat that looks cool yeah king of meat the tarsia game uh i can't remember that what reanimal is it that looks cool um the netties animal crossing thing flotopia like look at that um i thought there was some good stuff in there wait it's dead, probably the best one he's done to be fair <clears throat> i agree um i thought there was a a good mix um there was a few little surprises like a new mafia like we knew a new mafia was in development but that was a, a good one to close on um we knew indiana jones was going to be there but the big news is that that game is out in december on the xbox and personal computer but it will be out in spring for PlayStation 5. Now, this has been talked about for a while. There's been whispers. there have been um, reports leading up to the show that this was something that was definitely going to happen. Andy, I was surprised they said this on stage and it was their final big announcement. Like, usually your last big announcement is here is the most important thing. And here is the most important thing. This Xbox-owned game is going to PlayStation. How did you read it? Yeah, a bit weird, wasn't it? Just yeah. that whole thing was weird. That it, it it didn't felt like it. They they put unnecessary uh, um, kind of um, emphasis on it. Like it was a one more thing. They showed yeah. a tra- here's a trailer and it's coming out here. Oh great! And then platforms came up. Oh, but we left one out. It's this. Like what were they expecting? Yeah. Like it's just <laughs> awkward as hell. Um, uh, you know. And then you know, kind of Phil Spencer did his uh, regular you know, kind of into you with the burning red hot coals of his own employees uh, the next day <laughs> um, where they asked him about it. And um, he basically skimmed around it for 60 seconds. Like, oh, you know, we're doing great, but we got to have a business and didn't really answer it. But, he, you know, kind of suggested heavily that this is how it is now. I've got the quote here. Cool. Going to the PlayStation announcement, obviously last spring we launched four games, two of them on Switch, four of them on PlayStation, and we said we were going to learn. I think at the showcase I might have said that from our learnings we are going to do more. It's definitely true inside of Microsoft, and listen to this one, I think this is the key quote, it's definitely true inside of Microsoft that the bar is high for us in terms of delivery that we have to give back to the company because we get a level of support from the company that is just amazing in terms of what we're able to go do. Pete Donaldson, that means make us some money, Xbox. Sorry to interject, but another thing, I'll tell you another thing he said last spring, <laughs> is that Indiana Jones won't be coming to PlayStation. He literally mm. said that verbatim right. on a public stream. So clearly he was chatting bollocks. Um, so <laughs> I'd be amazed if this sort of thing was decided in, in you know uh, uh, earlier than six months ago um much there were like, even reports like at the, the time that they were working on it it's much um, like the employees know, the employers of indiana jones you cannot constrain that man he will get up <laughs> to all sorts 
they, you know, Phil like, Spencer didn't even know that was happening. They just export. <laughs> they, 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 they did they. export as PS Five, and they put it up there, and he was like, "Oh no, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to see." This is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, you know, he 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 said at the time, "Oh, we're we're releasing just these four games, just these four games, and then we're going to see what learnings we can take from it." You know, and we were even saying at the time when you know a lot of the you know kind of console defenders were 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 kind of on their high horses that. Mm. What do you? What is he expecting to learn? Like, what are you gonna? You're not gonna learn. Well, this, you know, oh, this has been great. So now we put more stuff on there. It was never mm. limited to f- those four games. I mean, there's there's a, a report this week from Windows Central that um, CFEs have sold over a million copies on PS5 since it, it came over. This is clearly the way the tra- you know the kind of the traffic is flowing, mm. um, and there's going to be much more of this. It's a weird situation because I, obviously, um, much like how I watch Rangers podcasts when they lose, um, I was checking out some of the mentalists on both sides of the fence and one of them made a good point that when commentators and pundits talk about it, they don't really think about it from the perspective of people who now feel like they've been duped by going Xbox this time, where they feel that Xbox is not putting out enough massive games where the Game Pass thing is worth not just getting a PS5 and getting all of Sony stuff and now all of Xbox's stuff. Like, they feel like they've been done, even though they supported Xbox, since Xbox, like, messed up the last generation so badly and then started this one with a bit of a canter. I mean, obviously, Halo getting delayed was, like, a bit of a mess, but I I do feel for those people. I totally empathise with people who've shelled out five, six hundred quid for an Xbox, because when you buy, you spend that money on a console traditionally you're entering an agreement right i'm going to invest into this box which is a new thing that doesn't have much on it and you're going to reward like you're going to give me benefits for having done that over purchasing a pc or a different box and yeah microsoft is sort of breaking that contract somewhat now Mm. um and you know make no doubt that it's being messaged in a particular way at a particular time that benefits them that you know you know when everyone was saying six months ago basic essentially behind the scenes every game is now being considered for ps5 um and you know the denied soft denials were coming out that very much looks like the case right and i don't really know why you would buy an xbox now over a ps5 or certainly a pc yeah. Is, it, is it because you, like generations you, are? Is it because generations are getting so long? You know, oh, the like, generations are basically done. I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, even this is. Well, I say this all the time, but the last generation was the most important console generation because it's the one where people built their digital libraries. Mm, yeah. So now that's that's done and dusted. They're not going away. When you yeah. when you bought a PS5, you bought an Xbox uh, Series X, Series X in particular, which had the same dashboard. You turned it on and all your games there, and you kind of felt like you just turned on a more powerful Xbox One, right? It's yeah. that's yeah. kind of like I think we are fortunate to have lived through such an exciting time for games because um, I think that's kind of going to go away now in terms of the rapid improvement in you know kind of power and and ideas and mechanics mm. you look at like the 15 years from like 1985 to you know 2000 or even 1995 to you know kind of 2010 15 years ago like was what like ps3 was about to come out do we really know that you... the 15 years ago was like modern warfare 2 like yeah i mean do you do you look at talent like connect connect um, PlayStation Move, you know, kind of like the tail end of that gen, and then PS3 came out. Do we feel like that was, you know, too, that long ago? It's I mean, you're you're because... talking the difference between a Super Nintendo game, yeah, and like The Last of Us. Yeah, <laughs> that's 15 years. Whereas now yeah. we're actually talking about The Last of Us and The Last of Us Remastered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the expectations of what people want out of games have changed so rapidly that it's not like human beings and human endeavor and the money it costs can't keep up with it. Um, I still think that <clears throat> Xbox have got themselves in kind of a impossible situation where now the next Xboxes they release going forward will just be 
like um like the rog ally and stuff like that there'll be or ipads there'll be loads mm. of different versions of them and people that want that hardware will get it but if i was just if i was not in this job and was in a situation where um and when i didn't have this job i bought all the consoles because i wanted to play everything but it's never felt less necessary to own an xbox than mm. it, than it has like ever and um, there's still some stuff you can only get on playstation time will tell if that changes and sony starts going day and day for everything on pc but even still to run stuff on a pc at the same level of quality as a playstation 5 you are spending thousands of pounds um yeah i do i do feel bad for the people who were really hot in 360 so they automatically went to xbox one got absolutely shafted but stuck with it built all their games up built all their friends have thousands and thousands of pounds in that ecosystem and now microsoft's basically turning to them and being like okay this uh this xbox experiment we're not competing with sony anymore we are so resolutely in third place that now we're just going to become the biggest publisher on playstation pete if you were a, a game buying punter like in your current situation would there be any reason whatsoever to get an xbox no because i mean I, I, no one's really it's weird no one really talks about it. i don't know many people who saw the xbox as being a big rush to get this time around and maybe because of like the chip shortage and stuff ps5 is slightly different but like everyone seemed to be wanting to sort of like grab all of a ps5 it's almost as if like the whole industries went oh well the move to streaming um video games is, is is the is the next move and then we've fallen into basically the piece of pcification of everything and, and everything you can play everything everywhere um and and like you say it's just iterative each um each new um, system is just a little bit better than the last and it never really there's not these massive defining kind of generations of uh, video game systems so yeah i think i think andy's right i think this is the last kind of the last swing swing for the um fences in, well it's, it's in, a, um, we need to it, Xbox, it's so. just it needs to change again right i mm. mean I, I coming back to that like i feel really fortunate professionally to have worked through you know times of great change like that's why it was always exciting for me to to cover video games is that it was such a fast moving um you know industry we were at the silent film era really of games and it, it mm. constantly was changing about what games were i mean going through that that um that year where uh, the year the Wii and the app store came out and just transformed everything you know i remember my whole family playing we sports that christmas and just being genuinely like moved that oh my god like how far this has come you know since i was a kid um and that's it's still going i mean games now there's an argument that the future of games is basically sport you know you look at the, the top 10 ga- selling games for the last two years have basically been the same 10 games probably top 20 you know the same games mm. they're these forever games it's but and people they're young people treat them they're sports right that's mm. that's uh, it, that's their their niche that they live within. It's not it's, everything is telling you that the blockbuster model now is not what we we had, which was almost like uh, you know, the Hollywood style model of like you know you, you consume one thing and then you move on to the next thing. It's not like that anymore. Um, that space probably lives on in in smaller games, which I think ultimately will be good. Um, that is where the innovation has been. Uh, for certainly the last decade is is in kind of the smaller indie games um but i just think there's a lot of soul searching right now within games about you know it within game creators about what they need to be going forward in this world where the, the market conditions are forcing them to do that because we've seen it since after the pandemic that just people are not buying uh you know kind of the the the, the lesser massive games that come out um you know they're sticking to their franchises mm. nintendo i think is there's a lot of hope that what nintendo comes with next year can uh you know can have a spark because a lot of uh, of uh you know kind of what we've been seeing in the industry the last 18 months is with job losses and stuff is confidence that the, the yeah. confidence is not there that we need a spark you need a switch to to be a real hit you need a gta to come out and be massive to really kickstart everything and uh, I think that everyone's kind of coasting now to next year and hoping that that comes. I, I think, think power- GTA will be unprecedented this time. Like GTA Five was big, but I think the 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 way people talk about GTA Six and the wait for it and kind of the expansion of the popularity of games generally, I I seriously think GTA 
we'll be writing stories six hours after GTA 6 is out being like this is the highest selling um, entertainment but it, it comes back to what Pete was saying about like we really need that because there's been nothing like that that makes people yeah. buy like a because all the big games are, are still being cross-gen because that, that's something that's been facing uh, developers this generation again that's that's unprecedented for them is that everyone's still playing their games on PS4 I mean Sony have said half of their uh, monthly active users so I'm guessing I think that's about 50 million of the 100 million ish are still playing their games on PS4 mm. because it's it's not it's not like what it was even generation before that where everything transit, like in Minecraft, do you know what I mean? Like people didn't stay on PS3 so much playing, you know, Minecraft and FIFA, they moved over, but that's not really happened to the same extent. Whereas GTA is a next gen game. We, yeah. we, we assume right now, I'm still not ruling oh, there's out. No way. There's I, no I, I way. I would they... never say there's no way. I would no, never say I there's agree. no way. Um, I'm, 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 amazed, on PS4? I'm amazed that this thing is not officially launching on PC uh, day and day. Mm. That seems insane because yeah. everything you've got to keep in mind is these, these guys are making games, right? Um, like five to 10 years behind the, they're guessing the zeitgeist when they come out, they're like in this oil tanker that they just can't steer. Right. So these decisions like, oh, yeah, we're going to release the PC version later. That's what Rockstar always do with GTAs, right? Well, that's a decision that would have been made years ago. You look yeah. at companies now like Square Enix and people like that. One of the biggest trends in the games industry right now is the console exclusives. Like you can't, they're not sustainable anymore. Even first party in PlayStation and Xbox are not doing console exclusives. I mean, PlayStation are clinging on, but they're bringing out their stuff later. You look at Square Enix that's completely you know, ripping up the rule book and they're going, right, now we're doing everything, releasing uh, uh, stuff on everything because it's not working for them. I'm kind of, I'll am kind i be kind of stunned if GTA doesn't come out on PC uh, have, have at launch. They, have the industry, uh, has the industry uh, as a whole got it's only got itself to blame by simply making, you know, we're in the middle of a, a recession by everything but name. People are skint. People don't have a lot. Of, people are quite cash poor. And... A lot of the games on the aforementioned PS4 are bloody massive. So you've probably got about 500 hours of yeah. gameplay, yeah. even single player experiences, um, uh, you know, available on your shelf at any time mm. to sort of get get back involved with. So they've only got themselves to play by making. So they, they used to be they, they used to be a case that they're competing for your for money, right? Mm. And people would um, uh, over time the amount of money that people made would go up. Mm. So that would that would be fine. But yeah. in the, today's world, you're competing for people's time, and there's that doesn't go up. You know, right. yeah. in yeah. your day, it's you're either going to spend six hours a day grinding Concord, or you're going to watch oh, yeah. Netflix, or go to cinema, or you know play a mobile game, mm. or go down the pub. That's that's what people, and that's kind of what's scary now is they force themselves into this bottleneck in the, the you know kind of the AAA space where they're making these massive games that would have been designed ten years ago when destiny was the thing uh, and games like that and the, you know the, it's costing hundreds of millions to make and as you say people just don't have the, the time of the day like i mean i look at stuff like uh concord which is out like coming out now it, I, it doesn't interest me because i don't have the time hmm. i mean it, yeah it... just on concord actually um we we're going to talk about it on this podcast but we've run out of time i'll post something later today since it's, it's out today it's been out in early access for a couple of days chatting about it there's been a lot of chat about concord about how this is like th th going to be the biggest flop ever two active users etc but it's a bit more complicated than that so Ooh. we'll talk about that later a few Free questions me pete <laughs> andy um a few questions before we, we go the only clan the only clan in the game <laughs> <laughs> we're the conk boys everyone calls us that um andy um a user by the name of why does it oh i know why so when i'm when i'm uh recording this uh on my this podcast on my pc discord decides that it would be absolutely unprecedented to show me the full names of people so it only shows me the first initial so i was like is this person's name really s dot 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 but it's not um i'll find their name andy where is west ham coming this season <laughs> oh it's oh, i don't know they've signed a lot of players um obviously the first game we looked exactly the same as we did last year um i i think we'll finish where we finished last year ninth 
mm, which I think would be good yeah. if we're, we're, if we're more entertaining to watch. I'm going to Crystal Palace tomorrow, who, um, when I went uh, a couple of months ago last season, they were 4 0 up 20 minutes in. And I watch the rest of the game from the bar. So <laughs> as, as long as we're, we're any improvement on that will be welcomed, to be honest. Mm. Um, that was from Spiffletron. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tron, for your question. Um, for Peter, WJN asks, any more Clash of the Titles? Oh, uh, no plans as of yet. Um, Alex got, got very busy and it was kind of quite a natural way of um, finishing all things up. But uh, Chris Tilly, uh, one of the um, XIGN um, movie guy, uh, he, he's uh, he's he's a Palace supporter, so he'll be interested in, in the match he's of the weekend. He's going to kick the shit out of Andy tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, I, I imagine West Ham will win that match because uh, Newcastle will have raided them for their central defender, Mark Gay. Yeah. I, I was yeah, going to say um, that. Thanks thanks for that. It's like they got about... <laughs> Just get, just uh, Andre Ayew, who turns into prime Ghanaian Messi every time that they play us, <laughs> he's uh, he's gone as well. Yeah, good, nice stuff. Yeah, but um, no, no, no plans as of uh, as uh, as of now. But uh, I think Chris Diddy's trying to start something back up again because uh, mm. it was one of my favourite shows. Such a such a well thought out, funny show. So yeah, but Stack well worth listening make... to the uh, to, to to the archive chores. Clash the titles. Mm. Have a listen. Stack make an absolute mountain of podcasts. Um, yeah. I got such a fright. I've not told you this. A couple of weeks ago, I got such a fright because I loaded up Riverside and it defaulted me into the waiting room for the studio for white wine question time. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? This doesn't look like the normal screen I go through to record the podcast. <laughs> and then I clicked back and it was like, oh, this week's episode picks a lot. And I'm like, I, I I don't think we booked Pixie Lot on the pod you, this week. Just you, that would Kit, be brilliant. You're just Gino placed, on, placed with chat. Pixie Lot. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you just think about Indiana Jones leave. coming on PS5? Uh, <laughs> you want some mega brain liquor candy drink, Miss Lot? Um, <laughs> Pixie Lot does sound like a character in like a GRPG. Sort of. <laughs> if if someone handed me a can of Monster and it was Pixie Lot flavor and it was some kind of red can i'd be like yeah that's probably like cherries or something right, yeah. like that um <laughs> speaking of um energy drinks apparently uh, tamur hussein friend of the show sent me a picture that there is a monster like exhibit at gamescom and i'm not there oh i would have went through the table to get to that monster <laughs> i would have missed 10 appointments to go to that monster exhibit like a big and then you, you go back through the table after you've drunk all their monster <laughs> just through the wall <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a beast that arrives at your village to just ravage like, like, and burn. What's the what's the what's the drink? The drink character, the Kool Aid guy. Kool Aid. Oh guy. yeah, <laughs> bursting through. But his eyes telling are just on to... stalks. Ah! <laughs> bursting through the wall, telling people to give us money on Patreon. Um, speaking of, <laughs> Deadworth Mean asks. This is one for Andy. What's the best way to consume VGC to give you guys the best bang for your buck? Um, probably back us on Patreon. Yeah. yeah, not the millions we're getting off of YouTube. The, the hundreds, <laughs> hundreds the, of thousands. The best, of if anyone, if anyone wants to support us, the best thing you can do is uh, is is uh, kind of join our Patreon. That's it, really. Mm. I don't think you could refresh the ads enough on the website. <laughs> you could not click them enough. <laughs> um. Also, give us uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts on Spotify because that shot us right up the charts. Some cheeky bastard gave me, gave us four out of five. I'm like, just give us five. Just give like, us what, five. What about this podcast is like, mm, yeah, four out of five. <laughs> I love, I, as an aside, I love how like in Japan, they're like notoriously harsh for any of their reviews. So like, it's like very rare that any restaurant or anything gets a five. Mm. Like, hmm, yes, it was the best meal I ever had. However, there was someone in the bathroom when I went. So three out of five. Yeah, fair. I, I was I, hoping that anecdote would be more humorous than it came. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saved it. You made me laugh. <laughs> Pete, what's the worst Japanese bathroom experience you've ever had? This is a clip for TikTok. Let me let's do it really naturally. All right, yeah. Pete, uh, what's the what's the worst Japanese bathroom experience you've ever had? A man died. <laughs> He shot no. himself to death. In in Japanese toilets, you do have. I've actually got a picture I can send you if you want to put this on the TikTok. I have do have a picture of uh, the worst bathroom experience that I've ever experienced. But in Japan, obviously, um, they have the sinks built into the system. So, mm. like sometimes, 
so it, so basically water comes in, you wash your hands and then that goes into the system and then that eventually um, flushes your effluvia away. Um, but it just <laughs> feels unnatural for soapy water to be coming into the into the toilet at that point. It just seems somehow mm. unclean. But of course, it's resourceful. It's saving the planet and it should ha- be happening more and we should all have those kind of toilets. But uh, I did go to one that did have that uh, functionality. Uh, but all of the um, uh, all of the surfaces uh, had like a red bloody paint all over it. It was absolutely grotesque. Wasn't paint. My uh, my best Japanese well. toilet story is my uh, my eight year old thought uh, it came rushed to me in the uh, in in the whatever bar we were in. I thought it was hilarious that she went to use the toilet and he, someone hadn't locked the door and there was just a like Japanese man on the toilet like ah <laughs> and she thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, the an um... awkward way for her to learn about the, uh, the the male genitalia, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> the worst bathrooms in the world and pete you'll have definitely experienced this uh rock and indie bars up and down the country where the door barely opens enough for you to get your legs in so you just end up touching the seat with your leg and you know it's riddled with pish it's just i, I, I don't know i don't know why rock rock bars dive bars indie bars they get away with just not really cleaning paint everything black I don't no one really either. knows how dirty, dirty it is i mean like it's oh, just you can't no horrific. you can't go in a toilet painted black that's wrong <laughs> exactly no one's cleaning that <laughs> bring out your blue light and it just lights up like yeah. fucking black. <laughs> I've, just, I've just had another japanese toilet uh memory the uh the universal studios toilets in the minion land are quite funny because it'll randomly play fart noises from the urinals Good. <laughs> and then a minion will be like huh. mm. <laughs> it's actually quite convincing <laughs> That's where I'm going to go when I go to Japan, when I need to let out all of my farts. Oh, you could totally get away with it, yeah. So especially if you did a Minion-esque giggle at the end. <laughs> I'd fuck it up, though, and do it in the Mario one and go like, oh, it's the Minions! Woohoo! <laughs> okay, let's leave it there. We can head off for the weekend. PED, what are you up to this weekend? I'm off to see AW at Wembley Ooh, for the first time. Are. Ever. I missed last year's um, All In, and I'll certainly be listening, uh, missing next year's because it's not going to be there. Um, so I thought I'd better uh, dirty my boots at, uh, at Wembley this weekend. So I'm really looking forward to that. There's some great indie shows over the weekend as well, if you can sort of catch some so in that there, So do they do London. that stuff? Does the, does the UK form a little mini WrestleMania style? Yeah, like? they sort of step up. They sort of step up and do little, little shows here and there. Um, Mark from, from WrestleMania has been uh, enjoying some some really, really good wrestling shows over the past uh, couple of weeks. So, yeah, there's, there's some great stuff going on. And we've also got a WrestleMe uh, live show in September before, actually before the... Um, uh, the, the the football ramble one, and we're going to go and see the J- Japanese um, company Noah um, straight Ooh. after that one. So we've kind of like we, we will, I think, wrestle me as a live show, be comprising most of the audience at the Japanese <laughs> Noah show. I think <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Andy into Japanese wrestling. Like we're so, we're so close. I think DDT. Is... I think as a company, DDT is definitely the one to sort of get involved in because they're sort of yeah. bloody. You know, they're wrestling dolls and you know shoving things people's bums and stuff it's really sounds, sounds it's, it's quint quintessentially japanese and a lot of fun is it is it ddt that did that spot where like one guy stuck his thumb up someone's arse and then someone stuck their thumb up his arse and it was like a big daisy chain of people yeah. with their thumbs up each other's arses and then it got to the last guy so 10 people in a row andy picture this 10 people in a row thumbs up each other's arses the last mm. guy goes and they all flip over at the same time it's fantastic so good i'll send you a clip of that that's proper pro wrestling none of this Shawn michaels bullshit i want thumbs up arses um on that delicate note send your questions comments and concerns to podcast at video games chronicle.com support us at patreon.com slash video games chronicle thank you for listening to the podcast follow us on twitter at jordan medler at p donaldson at andy underscore bjc Thanks to the great Grant Kirkhope for the VGC podcast theme. Sorry about all the arse chat. Until next time, say goodbye, Pete. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Andy. Goodbye. And we'll see you next time.